Welcome back everybody to AP Physics C Momentum Impulse. Today we're doing 2D problems involving inelastic collisions. So let's see, we have a five kilogram ball is hanging from a long but very flexible wire when it is struck by a 1.5 kilogram stone traveling horizontally to the right at 12 meters per second. The stone, the stone rebounds to the left with a speed of 8.5 meters per second and the ball, the ball swings to a maximum height h above its original level. The value of h is closest to blank. Okay, so we're looking for this h. This one might look a little bit confusing because we have both energy and momentum in this, which a lot of problems with energy does do have. Uh, I should say momentum do have. <laughs> okay, so let's find, first of all, let's look at this before the collision happens and after the collision. Okay, so momentum equal initial equals momentum final. So this is before the collision and then after the collision. Okay, so before the collision, we have this 1.5 kilogram stone going 12 meters per second. We have this 5 kilogram uh, ball that's not moving, so that's before the collision. After the collision, we have this 1.5 kilogram ball uh, stone going 8.5 meters per second to the left, so it's going to be negative 8.5. And then we have the stone, uh, the ball, 5, <laughs> 5 kilograms, I'm getting confused. And we don't know what the velocity is of the stone after the collide. Let's try to see if we can figure that out. 1.5 times 12 plus uh, 1.5 times 8.5. And divide that by 5. And then we should see that the stone is going to go around 6.15 meters per second after they hit. Okay. So now that we know the stone is going 6.5 meters per second after it's hit, Let's find out how high it goes. So we know the stone has a certain amount of kinetic energy. And all that kinetic energy is going to turn into gravitational potential energy. So let's look at the stone. One half the mass of the stone, or the ball. Like, man, I keep messing you guys up. Sorry about that. Mass of the ball is 5. Velocity of the ball at the bottom when it was just struck is 6.15 squared. And the mass of the ball is going to be 5 after it's hit, and gravity's 10, and we can find the height. So let's do this. Uh, fives cancel out. 6.15 squared times 0.5, divide that by 10, and we get 1.89 meters. Okay? Hope that one made sense to you guys. Moving on. Uh, we did this last time. Let's go to more 2D problems. All right, let's look at this. Okay, so the figure shows a ballistic pendulum. A simple system for measuring the speed of a bullet. A bullet of mass MB makes a completely inelastic collision with a block of mass uh, MW, which is suspended like a pendulum. After the impact, the block swings to a maximum height H. In terms of H, in terms, uh, in terms of H, in terms of H, MB, MW, what is the initial speed V1 of the bullet? So we want to find what this initial velocity of the bullet was the made disc lodge inside and go up to a height of h. So we're going to kind of actually work backwards. We're going to think about uh, when it got hit, it had all this kinetic energy, which transferred to gravitational potential energy. So we're going to say all the kinetic energy uh, of the embedded bullet turns all into gravitational potential energy to a certain height h. So we have one half mass of bullet plus mass of the wood times the velocity, uh, we, what they call that? Velocity, doo, doo, doo. oh, I guess they didn't say. So we're going to call that V2 squared is going to be equal to the uh, mass of the bullet plus the mass of the wood times gravity times the height. So with this, what we can do is we can see that mass cancels out. And then what we can see is we can kind of isolate to find the, how fast the, uh, the bullet and the block were moving together. So I can say the bullet and the block, V2 I'm calling that, is equal to 2GH square root, if we did some algebra. Now that we know that, let's find out how fast the bullet was going before it hit this. So we're going to use conservation momentum to figure that out. So momentum initial equals momentum final. So at the very beginning, before they collided, the mass of the bullet had a velocity of the bullet. That's what we're looking for. And then the mass of the wood 
wasn't moving at the very beginning, so this is just zero. And this is going to be equal to the mass of the bullet plus the mass of the wood because the, it gets embedded inside of it. And it's moving with the velocity of square root of 2gh. Uh, we see this goes to zero. And we can now see the velocity of the bullet is equal to mass of the bullet plus mass of the wood uh, times square root of 2gh divided by mass of bullets. Okay, so just a decent amount of algebra there. Yep. Uh, all right, uh, going to do a few more problems. So let's look at this. A 1,000 kilogram car traveling 15 meters per second uh, collides with a 2,000 kilogram truck traveling east uh, at 10 meters per second. The occupants wearing seatbelts are injured, but the two vehicles move away from the impact uh, as one. So they kind of stick together and they start moving in this direction. The insurance adjuster asks you to find the velocity of the wreckage just after the impact. Okay, so for this kind of problem, we're going to do the same thing as what we've always been doing, but we're going to be looking at the x and y direction. So we're going to look at momentum initial in the x equals momentum final in the x. So at the very beginning, uh, we have this 2,000 kilogram truck going 10 meters per second in the x direction. Then we have the other car, 1,000 kilogram car, and it's going 15 meters per second before they crash. So in the x direction, it's not going any velocity. It's only going up. So this is going to be zero. And we know after they collide, they're going to combine their masses, so 2,000 plus 1,000, and they're going to have a final velocity in the x direction. Let's find that final velocity. 2,000 times 10, divide that by 3,000, and we get 6.6. .6 7 meters per second. So after they hit each other, they're going to have a velocity in the x direction of 6.67 meters per second. Now let's look at the y. Momentum initial in the y equals momentum final in the y. We have the 2,000 kilogram truck going 10 meters per second to the east, but in the y direction it's not moving at all, so it's just zero. Plus the 1,000 kilogram car going 15 meters per second in upwards, so that's going to be positive 15 in the y direction. After they collide, they stick together, so 2,000 plus 1,000 stick together. And let's find how fast they're moving when they're stuck together. Uh, now I'm going to do 1,000 times 15 divided by 3,000, and we get 5 meters per second. Okay. Uh, so now we know in the y direction, after they collide, they're going 5 meters per second in the y direction. And now let's find the combined value. It says find the velocity. So we're going to find this hypotenuse with the angle. I'm going to do Sokotoa, 5 squared plus 6.67 squared. Square root of that, and we get the velocity is equal to 8.34 meters per second at an angle of, I'm going to do inverse 10, inverse 10 opposite 5 divided by 6.67, and I get 36.86 degrees. 36.86 degrees. Okay. Hope that made sense. We're going to do one more of these if it was a bit tough. But let's do one more. Two automobiles traveling at the right angles to each other collide and stick together. Car A has a mass of 1,200 kilograms and a speed of 25 meters per second before the collision. Car B has a mass of 1,600 kilograms. The skid mark showing that immediately after the collision, the wreckage uh, was moving in a direction making an angle of 40 degrees with the original direction of car A. What was the speed of car B before the collision, assuming that any other unblessed are negligible? So we don't know what the velocity of this blue car is, but we do know that it's going straight up. Knowing that, we can figure out a few things. Let's first look at the x direction, though. So momentum initial in the x is equal to momentum final in the x. So at the very beginning, this 1,200 kilogram car is moving in the x direction of 25 meters per second. The blue car, which has a mass of 1,600 kilograms, is only going in the y direction. So the velocity in the x direction is zero. But after they collide, they collide and stick together. Uh, the record is moving in the direction, so they're going to stick together. And so it's going to be 1,200 plus 1,600 because they're stuck together. They're going to have a certain velocity in the x direction. So let's figure out what that velocity is in the x direction. So I'm going to do 1,200 times 25, 
and divide this by 2800. And then I see that after the collision, they're both moving at 10.71 meters per second. Okay, so they start both moving like this, but we know in the x direction, they're going to be moving 10.71 meters per second. That being said, we could also find how fast they're moving in the y direction, just doing some uh, tan. So I know tan of 40 is equal to opposite the v fine on the y divided by adjacent 10.71. Then I can have uh, 10.71 times tan of 40, and we get v fine on the y is equal to 8.99 meters per second. Okay. So now that we know that, let's see if we can figure out what the velocity of this car was before they collided. So let's look at the momentum initial in the y and momentum final in the y. So the first car, 1,200 kilograms. We see that it's only moving the x direction, so the velocity in the y is just zero. And the 1,600 kilogram car, we don't know how fast it's moving in the y direction. Okay. But we do know after they collide, oops, after they collide, they're going to have a combined speed together of 8.99 meters per second. So we can now find out how fast the blue car was going. 1200 plus 1600 times 8.99, divide that by 1600, and we get 15.73 meters per second. I hope all that made sense, guys. Uh, next time we're actually going to be talking about explosions, so I hope you guys are excited for that. All right, guys. See you next time. Peace.